Hey guys, I'm Ball today to my round 10 preview of Highlanders vs. Hurricanes. So, starting off the Highlanders, you know, they were pretty unfortunate last week to lose against the Crusaders. You know, they did put up a good game, really. You know, they were winning within the first half, but the Crusaders were just too strong and, you know, took away the win, really. But yeah, the Highlanders are playing their last game in Dunedin for this whole competition within Super Rugby Ultra Roar. And to be honest, I think they've exceeded expectations. You know, a lot of people, I think, saw them as, you know, the you know, getting the wooden spoon, you can say, within this competition. But, yeah, no, they've... Yeah, you can say they've just exceeded expectations, really. And, yeah, at, and it looks like they've, you know, they stuck to the same side within, you know... Yeah, they just stuck to the same side from last week's game against the Crusaders. And it looks like this game might be played with no fans. You know, we have to wait, on, wait to see on that. You know, with New Zealand putting, putting up the restrictions with... I think the whole New Zealand is now on level two and with... Auckland is now on level three because that, that's what the case was. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see and see what happens. You know, hopefully fans can be there with, but it, it's up. It's very unlikely about to say so. If I have to be honest, really. But yeah, um, at number one they've selected Aiden Johnstone. At number two they're going with Ash Dixon, who's the first co-captain. At three they're going with Slade Tokalahi. At four they're going with Perry Perry Parkinson. At five they're going with Jack Wheaton. At six they're going with Shani Brazil. At seven we're with Dylan Hunt, and at eight we're going with Makalea Tutu. So yeah, it's a very good looking forward pack. You know, like I said, there's no changes from this side, and yeah, the forward pack was I'd say very dominant within that game against the against the Crusaders. You know, especially that loose forward trio of uh, Vassell, Hunt, and Tutu. They were definitely crucial within that breakdown. You know, they won a lot of those balls, and you know, it just helped the Hondos really stay within that match. And yeah, their long pairing of Parkinson and Wheaton was particularly impressive throughout that match as well. You know, their lineouts. I'd say within the first half was pretty good. You know, they had a good lineup, you know, success, you could say. But then the Crusaders with White Lock just stole all their lineouts and just went all, went all Crusaders' way, really. But, yeah, with the front row as well, you know, they have a decent front row, I'd say. I, personally, I would say they have a better front row within this, within this game, you know, with the likes of Johnson, Dixon, and Takalahi. They, they were pretty impressive throughout, throughout this whole competition. And yeah. Especially um, with Ax Dixon, you know, he is getting his 100th Super Rugby, you know, he is playing his 100th Super Rugby appearance within this game. So, yeah, congratulations to him, really. You know, he definitely deserves it. You know, he did play for the Hurricanes early on within his career, and he did move to the Hollanders, I think, in 2015, the the year that the, Holl the Hollanders actually won their first Super Rugby title. So, but yeah, he's had a good career and definitely deserves to pick up his 100th appearance. So, moving on to the backs. At number nine, they've selected Aaron Smith, who's the other co-captain. At 10, we're going with Josh Leone. At 11, we're going with Jordan Narecki. At 12, we're going with C.O. Tonkinson. At 13, we're going with Michael Collins. At 14, they've gone with Josh McKay. And at 15, they're going with Mitch Hines. So, yeah, again, a very good-looking back line. You know, like I said, no changes from this whole side. And, yeah, the back line is looking pretty good. I mean, I'd say, you know, Particularly with Jonah Narecki, he was pretty impressive throughout that last match against the Crusaders with that breakaway try. Yeah, he just outpaced really Severis and fair play to him. He definitely deserves to get him on the scoreboard. And Josh Piquet as well. Don't get me wrong. He was, I think that was his best performance I've seen from him so far. You know, definitely with that try saving tackle, he was pretty impressive throughout the whole match. And yeah, you know, Aaron Smith, was just, Aaron Smith and Josh Leone, you could say, were pretty much controlling the game throughout that match. And yeah, Aaron Smith will be also picking up his 150th Super Rugby, you know, cap within this game. So, fair play to him, you know, congrats really. You know, he's had a good career essentially with the Hollanders. And, you know, he is, in my opinion, still the best scrum half in the world. You know, that, that might be, you can argue that, but I think he still is the best scrum half. And, yeah, I mean, he's still, yeah, he, he's still the New Zealand's number one. So, yeah, that, that can go up for a debate. But, yeah, he... Has been very impressive throughout the Super Rugby, Super Rugby Ultra Roar, and definitely deserves to. I, I think he got voted as um, the Hollanders recently. I think it was like uh, last week. He got, he got, he got their award for Hollanders, you know, backs player of the year. So yeah, fair play to him. He definitely deserves it. But yeah, uh, moving on to the bench. You know, they have a decent bench. I've said so myself. You know, the likes of Liam Coltman. You know, Danielle Brown. They have the likes of Jeff Waits. You know, point of eye. So it's a decent bench. I'm not gonna say it's, it's strong, but they have a few players in there who can make an impact within the second half. And yeah, you're you're gonna need that because it's it is the Hurricanes, and I think throughout this whole competition, the Hurricanes have had arguably the strongest bench, and 
yeah, you're gonna have to deal with that when you when you go into the second half. So, but yeah, other than that, that's it with the Hondas. Uh, moving on to the Hurricanes, you know, they've made two changes to their side following, you know, last week's win against the Chiefs. You know, that was, they were pretty impressive throughout that game, and they did get that bonus point. So, yeah, it's they had a good win essentially. But yeah, at number one, they have selected Ben May. At number two, they're going with Dan Coles, who's the captain of the side. At three, they're going with Tyrell Lomax. At four, they're going with James Blackwell. At five, they're going with Scott Scrapton. At six, they're going with Reed Princep. At seven, they're going with Dupacy Carifi. And at eight, they're going with Artie Sevilla. So yeah, it's a very good looking four pack. They haven't, they haven't made any changes within their four pack. And yeah, I wouldn't as well. That four pack has been very dominant throughout this competition. You know, the likes of Princep, Carifi, and Sevilla. That loose four trio has also been, they were pretty crucial in that game against the Chiefs and definitely won a few balls. And yeah, honestly, yeah, with that fake pass, which is mind blowing to say the least, of where <laughs> he didn't really do much, but yeah, it is an honestly be a thing to do. So yeah, credit to him for that. And yeah, I know with their um, locks with Blackwell and Scrapton, I've, I've always said this, but they've been very impressive throughout this competition. And I'd say definitely the, not with the most improved, but like they've definitely, uh, you know, stepped up within their form and definitely, you know, have helped the Hurricanes, you know, be where they are at the moment. And yeah, with the likes of their front row with May, Coles, and Lomax, it's yeah, it's a decent front row. I'm not gonna say it's the best, but it's a decent front row. And Ben May will be playing his you know final game for the for the club within this match. And yeah, no, after this he will, I think, yeah, he will end his Super Rugby career. So yeah, it's a you know, hopefully he has a good game and yeah has a good run out for them. I think this is I think it will be his ninety eighth cap. So yeah, he's just too shy, but too shy of a hundred, but. Yeah, fair play to him. He definitely the, deserves to go out of the bang, and hopefully he can get a win on his last game. But yeah, uh, moving on to the backs. You know, at number nine, they've selected Jamie Booth. At 10, they're going with Jackson Gordon Bashup. At 11, they're going with Wes Goosen. At 12, they're going with Peter Amanga Jensen. At 13, they're going with Billy Proctor. At 14, they're going with Vince Asso. And at 15, they're going with Jordy Barrett. So yeah, it's a very good looking back line there, you could say. You know, they have shifted a few players. I mean, I can start off with Jamie Booth. He is getting, yeah, he gets the, the starting slot ahead of TJ Perinard due to um, his wife, you know, I think they're, you know, his uh, wife is due to give birth to their first child. So, yeah, congrats to them. And hopefully, yeah, definitely <laughs> deserves to miss this game. You know, it's your first child, what can you say? And yeah, hopefully uh, Jamie Booth can uh, put up a good performance. And other than that, you know, they have also switched Billy Proctor within the 13 role and started and you know slotted Vince also within 14 due to Kobus Van Vank I think leaving the club officially and yeah no it's a pretty good looking center combination there with, it's a pretty young com- young yeah young combination really with Peter Munger Jensen and Billy Proctor so that could be interesting you never know that, that could be something for the future we'll have to wait and see and Vince also I mean, he can also he can he can always play 14 you know, I think that's where he began his career so yeah that's it's not really going to be Hard to, hard to play there for him. And yeah, with the likes of Jordy Bear, I mean, he's been outstanding throughout this competition and probably their best player. And yeah, he, the Hurricanes should be definitely happy that they, you know, got him to sign a new contract with them because I, I saw all of this, you know, all the news of him, you know, he had, it was like, uh, what did he say? It was like sitting down at the principal's office when he had to tell Scott Robertson from the Crusaders that, you know, he was going to sign a contract with or extend his contract with the Hurricanes. So, yeah, no, that's a, that's probably the best signing in a sense you could say for the Hurricanes and yeah, Jordy Barrett's, yeah, he's a bright future for sure. But yeah, uh, moving on to the bench, you know they also have a decent bench. I have to say so myself. You know they have the likes of Ricky Racatelli. You know they have Mafalejo. They have, you know Devin Flanders. They have, you know, Lassi, You know Chase Tia Tia. So yeah, it's a decent bench. I'm not gonna say it's strong. Like, they've had stronger benches within this, within this competition, but. Yeah, I think the main one that's main per- you know, player who isn't in this side is uh, Asafa Moore because he- I think he's been sick throughout this whole weekend, so well, throughout this whole week, so Riccatelli is just taking his spot. But yeah, other than that, I think that's it with the Hurricanes lineup. So, moving on to the prediction, you know, the Hurric- if the Hurricanes do win this game, it will be their 200th uh, Super Rugby win, so, you know, that's something that the Hurricanes will be trying to aim for. And yeah, if the Hurricanes do win this game as well, they will. Well, they have to hope that the Crusaders beat the Blues as well, and they have to hope that they, you know, 
win this game. And if they do, if both of those things happen, then the Hurricanes will, you know, come up in second, for, you know, second within this competition. And I think the Highlanders will place, I think no matter what, the Highlanders will place fourth, even if they get a win. But yeah, it's definitely better than what a lot of, you know, a lot of other people expected them to be. So yeah, uh, within this game, I actually do think the Highlanders will get a win. I think they'll win this game by 25 to 20. I think that's kind of deserved, you know, after their, I'd say, good performance against the Crusaders, and I think they'll overturn it and get and get a win in their final home game in Dunedin, and essentially for 2020 as well. So that's it with this, uh, this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.